Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us um, for part two of our webinar series. We're going to give folks just another minute or so here to trickle in. Um, I want to be respectful of everyone's time, um, but um, we will do a hard start at 10.02. So uh, feel free to fill up coffee, use the restroom, and then we will get going here in about just a minute. In the meantime, while we are waiting for folks to join us, um, if you would like to put your name, what organization you're with, um, and what city you're in, and just introduce yourself, that's always fun and welcome, um, just to fill some time. <clears throat> All right. We are going to get going then. So thank you for all of you very punk punctual people here. Um, so we are um, going to be uh, presenting part two of a two-part webinar series today. Um, last week, I presented on our uh, listening sessions for the spring 2023 session. Um, and that was California Youth Thoughts on Tobacco and Marijuana. Um, part two of this webinar is going to really be focused more so on social media. Um, and how we can leverage social media to really motivate and support young people to quit. Um, and then for those of you who weren't able to join us last week, uh, my name is Caitlin Maisman and I am the Outreach Coordinator at CYAN. And I'm gonna be uh, presenting and with you for the next hour. And then I do always just like to introduce who CYAN is. Um, if you aren't familiar, we are a statewide technical assistance agency, and we are located in Sacramento, California. Um, we offer a number of um, resources and trainings and technical assistance, um, supporting statewide advocacy and policy campaigns. Um, and we also, this is sort of like my bucket and wheelhouse here, produce educational materials and publication, both for youth and young adults and for practitioners in the field. Um, and we do have three primary areas of focus. We have our youth and school program, and we really work there to increase and strengthen engagement um, with youth that are doing tobacco control work. So really lining them up with the resources and support that they need to continue to do this local work. Um, then we have our young adult and college program. Um, and this is uh, both policy and also direct work with young people to really um, support any smoke and tobacco free policies that they are working on on their campus and to support campuses and then of course to support them with cessation materials and support. Um, and then finally my sort of silo there is the emerging products piece. So this is where we are doing things like our listening session, um, working with uh, youth and young adults partners um, and also adult partners to um, educate on sort of what we're hearing from young people and making sure that we're staying um, ahead of the products and the language that young people are seeing and using. And then this is our team here. We are a team, a uh, small team, but a mighty team of seven um, under the direction of our managing director, Vicki Webster, and our project director, Kimberly Homer Vagadori. Um, so there's all of our smiling faces, I'm sure. Um, we've met lots of you and you've, you've seen these faces in the field, but here, here we are again, bright and sunny on a Tuesday morning. <laughs> All right, so getting into our content for um, the session, kind of our overview here. So I'm gonna start by offering just a really kind of big picture, brief background of um, how young people are using social media and interfacing it with it and why we focus on it. Um, it's kind of like that adage of you have to meet people where they're at. And what we know from research and what we've heard from young people in our listening sessions is that young people are on social media and especially after um, sheltering in place and, and, you know, doing school remotely, they're continuing to interface with social media at escalated or higher rates. Um, I am going to include a very small review of webinar one for anyone who wasn't able to join us, specifically around what we heard directly from youth in California um, about how they're interfacing with social media, how they're accessing um, any cessation or support resources on social media, and also kind of their preferred both messaging and type of resource. Um, and then we're gonna jump into kind of um, a case study of CYAN. So um, this is really where I'm gonna paint the picture of how we created our messages, how we consumer tested with young people and what those campaigns and messages look like. 
Um, and then I'm going to share our findings and lessons learned. So these are kind of our best practices. And again, this isn't the gold standard, um, but what we found with the young people that we've worked with and collecting feedback from them, um, these are the things that they look for and the types of messages and images they're most likely to interface with. And then I'm going to share the resources that we have available to you um, on our website, and then hopefully we'll have some time at the end for uh, discussion and questions. I do want to quickly make a distinction before we jump into um, all of our learning today. Um, but when I speak about tobacco, I am referring to commercial tobacco. So this is mass produced tobacco products um, that are sold for profit. I'm not referring to traditional or sacred tobacco, which is grown and used by tribal nations um, and American Indians for ceremonial purposes. So as I say tobacco, please take note that I'm referring to commercial tobacco. All right, so jumping into kind of the background and overview of young people and their social media use. So we're going to start with, um, <laughs> hope you're all awake and ready, a quick quiz or poll question here. Um, so how many hours per day, so this is per day, do you think young people are spending on social media? Um, if you'd like to just unmute yourself and yell it out or put it in the chat, I'll give you a minute here to share your answers. And again, this is uh, Around, 13 um, to 18. 10 hours. 10 hours. Okay, good guess. Anyone else? Any other thoughts? More or less? Eight. Eight. Okay. Well, I'm happy to share that it's right around four and a half hours, which still feels like quite a lot, right? When we think about um, the amount of time a young person has in a day and what they're spending on screens, right? So this is dedicated time specifically on social media. So this doesn't include things like Google searching. This doesn't include things like using a screen to read articles, doing homework. This is solely on um, a social media platform. And what's interesting about when, when young people are um, accessing social media is that they're most often doing this between 4 and 10 p.m. So thinking about that kind of like after school period, um, but they do report that they're also doing it while watching TV. So it's this idea of almost like competing screens, right? So you're watching TV, you're scrolling on your phone, you're looking at social media. So I think this is an important picture to paint when we talk about young people and social media because we are competing with so much information coming at young people at once. So making sure as we're fighting for them to see these cessation messages or these motivative messages to quit, that they're the right messages at the right time for young people, right? Because there's so many other screens we're competing with to get their attention. And then last question here before you can all sit, sit back and not have to um, scour your brains for an answer. Um, which platform, so during those four and a half hours, which platform do you think young people are spending the most time on per day? Um, and again, you're welcome to put that in the chat. Um, or uh, put unmute yourself. Tick, I see lots of TikToks, Instagrams, TikTok, YouTube. Good guess. Well, a couple of you got it. It's actually Instagram. Um, so give yourself a, a round of applause. That was your last quiz for the day. Um, so young people report spending the most amount of time um, on Instagram. Um, and they say that that is because it integrates most um, types of media, so both still digital images and also reels or video. So it's kind of a more encompassing platform, um, followed by TikTok, which I saw lots of you mention, YouTube for things like movies, Snapchat, and Twitter. Um, do you see anything missing on this, on this list that you can think of that we often use in the public health world? Yeah, for sure, Mark. Facebook, right? And so thinking about not just the kinds of messages that we're creating for young people, but where we're placing them is so important. Um, young people aren't really leveraging or utilizing Facebook to seek out that kind of information. So again, meeting young people where they're at. Um, and so what we know and why I think this, this exercise is so helpful is that um, youth and young adults are continuing to engage with social media. Um, and this is where we really wanna be focusing to place our efforts to motivate and encourage quit attempts with youth and young adults. That's not to say there's not a time and a place for things like print materials, certainly on campuses or in restrooms or things like scanning a QR code. Um, that's important. And that is also a big part of the work we do. 
Um, but what we have heard from young people, especially in this uh, most recent round of, of listening sessions that we did this spring, um, is that they're getting information and they trust the information they're seeing on social media um, and they feel safest accessing there. So again, this is really um, where we wanna focus these efforts and cast that wide net to really make sure we're catching um, young people's attention. And then just kind of quickly reviewing what we heard directly from um, both middle school and high school participants in our youth listening sessions. Um, and for those of you who joined us last week, this is review. Um, again, in terms of where young people note um, seeing any cessation messages or accessing them, and even just where they access information, um, all of them recognized and pointed to social media. Um, in terms of the kind of messages related to tobacco and marijuana that they would pay attention to, um, by and large, any messaging around mental health really did test well with them. Those were the things that they cared about. Um, they cared about things like anxiety and depression and isolation, and those were the types of messages that they said they would pay attention to. Um, and they also said that they would pay attention to any positive messaging around immediate social or health impact, right? So don't tell me about, you know, things like getting cancer or my teeth falling out or getting wrinkly. That feels really far away. Tell me why I shouldn't be doing this now. Is it, you know, because addiction makes it harder for me to be around my friends because I'm thinking about using products all the time or something like, you know, not having enough breath to run up and down the field during a practice. So really focusing on um, the positive outcomes of connecting more with friends or physically being able to participate sports in sports. So that immediate piece tested well with young people. And then in terms of kind of the type of information they would seek and where they would seek it from, um, we asked them about things like, you know, hotlines or talking to a counselor. Um, what came across was that there was a very strong fear of judgment um, from an adult or that person they were speaking to um, if they were seeking in-person support. Um, and that feeling of anonymity made them feel safe. So things like an anonymous app, anonymous tech support, um, and, and really wanting those resources to say front and center, that they're both free and also anonymous. And especially when we're dealing um, with, with youth populations, um, we really need to remember that the fear of a parent finding out about product usage is very strong and real. Um, and so saying that right on the front end um, would immediately make young people more likely to access a resource. And again, this is all directly from the young people we spoke to in our listening sessions this year. Um, and then this is a quote um, that a young person shared with us. I know a lot of people who want to quit, but there's really nothing accessible and they're scared. Um, so again, as we're going through this piece on social media, again, this is really just to make sure that we are creating resources for young people in the types of formats that we know they'll access and putting them in the places where they know they'll feel safe to access them. And by and large right now, um, that place really is social media. Okay, so jumping into the work that we've done, and again, this is kind of our case study. We had some, some wins, we had some misses, um, and that has really kind of helped us refine how we use social media um, to really reach young people to motivate and support those quit attempts. So since April of 2020, CYN has uh, created, consumer tested, and also launched uh, seven full statewide social media campaigns. Um, we didn't even have an Instagram until 2019, um, and we hadn't done any targeted um, full campaigns for, for youth and young adults. So this was really a learning for us. Um, and like I said, we had some wins, bigger wins, but we did have some misses, and that's part of sharing that, right? Um, all of these campaigns were created, reviewed, and tested with youth and young adult audiences throughout the state. Um, and I will share what that process looked like and also um, their feedback, which was, I can't tell you how helpful that was in the message development and that piece of making sure that we're inviting young people to the conversation and that we're talking with them, not at them. Um, and it really changed what these, what these campaigns look like. So this is just kind of a quick overview. I'm really gonna focus, and like I said, we've done seven campaigns, but I'm really gonna focus kind of on our first three because this is where we were fine tuning and really learning um, what worked and what didn't. 
Um, and so we started in April of 2020, um, developing a campaign and consumer testing it with young people. Um, and I want you to think back about what that time was, right? Young people are um, sheltering in place, transitioning to remote learning. Um, and we wanted to make sure that we were reaching them and providing them the support um, that they needed as they may not have access to products as some of them are maybe um, having to quit because they're now also um, around parental influence more often. And so we developed and launched that very first campaign um, in May uh, and into June of 2020. Um, and then in October, we kind of like started to get some data and see how use patterns were changing as a result of COVID. And so we really shifted there to a treatment focus, right? So we learned that um, you know, young people who were maybe kind of experimenting or hadn't transitioned to daily use had a decreased usage of products. But unfortunately, the young people who were current users had accelerated use during this period. And so we really wanted to focus on treatment. And so again, we um, developed, consumer tested, and then launched that campaign in uh, November and December. And then in January, we had kind of a smaller companion campaign that was our um, sort of like New Year's resolution, you know, now is a great time to quit, um, just to really follow up that momentum. And again, I'm focusing on these because these are the campaigns where we really, um, really learned a lot. Oops. Okay, so again, I kind of touched upon this thinking about how we developed this first campaign. So um, we heard from young people that a lot of usage, especially during this time, was tied to coping with stress and anxiety. It was a really scary time with lots of health messaging, right, from all over the place. I felt stress and anxiety. Um, there was so much transition happening for young people. Um, and what we heard and, and saw and heard from our youth and young adult partners and our youth boards and college boards is that they were feeling lonely. They were isolated from their friends. They were at home doing remote learning. Um, and also they were bored. And so what really came across was, you know, how do I address these feelings of loneliness without using tobacco? How do I manage this boredom and all of this free time I now have at home without tobacco? Um, and so we took um, those voices and those things that we were hearing from our youth partners and created our very first um, social media campaign. Um, and you can kind of see here, this is a screenshot of how we consumer tested it. So um, we created our messages, superseded them just with some stock images there. Um, and we asked young people to tell us what they thought. So very simple questions like, would you pay attention to this? Would this uh, be something you'd read? Do you, what do you like? What do you dislike? Does this make sense? Would you, what hashtags would you use? Um, and I always make a little note here because I know we loved, I'm a data lover. Um, so this was reviewed by 60 youth and young adults across 11 counties throughout the state. Um, and our median youth review age was 15. Um, and while this, pause, this feedback was mostly positive, we did have some more critical voices in there. And those critical voices are, I think, really what shaped this campaign and made it more successful. So um, this slide here has our, um, original images on the top. So that's what we tested with young people and collected feedback. And then the bottom is what we actually um, placed. So those are our final outcomes. So just kind of starting there on the left. Um, the feedback here was like, I don't, I don't really know. This feels like a generic person. This kind of looks like, like what's quarantine? That sounds like something like an older millennial would say. And I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. I came up with that, right? Like, um, you're right, we need to be using your language. Um, and what the young people said was like, I want to see a real young person. I don't want to see hands. I want to see a face that looks like me. I, what is a quarantine, right? And what we were trying to convey was building this network of support. And so you can see by listening to young people incorporating their voice, it's a much more beautiful image and it's much more dynamic. And it was something that they would interface with. Um, that middle image was interestingly, um, kind of the most polarized, polarizing with um, the reviewers. Some people thought that that top image kind of felt um, sad or like a little mopey. And there was like a lot of negative health messaging coming at them at that time. And they really wanted something that was positive. But conversely, some young people are like, yeah, this feels real. This is how I'm feeling. I'm like stuck inside. I feel kind of like um, kind of sad and lonely. And so we actually ran both of these, um, but 
directly from a young person, they suggested, what if you flip flop that language? And instead of saying increasing, vaping can increase, focus on the positive, right? So quitting vaping can lower. And so that small pivot and also placing that again with um, a beautiful young woman who is diverse and reflects young people's diversity within the communities that they're living in is a completely different experience. Um, and then finally, again, that last um, image there on the top, again, just didn't translate. They said it looked like maybe their mom doing yoga. It felt really generic. Again, it seemed like an older millennial wrote it. Now it's like, okay, guilty. Um, and so again, just simplifying the language, showing a young person, showing their face, right? Not generic hands. Um, and really just focusing on what the message was, which was you can meditate to help lower stress and help you cope with those tobacco triggers. Um, and then just a couple of quick little call outs here from our lessons learned. Um, we actually started by calling this campaign, try something new. Um, and uh, it turns out like, I don't know why I didn't connect these dots. Trying the word try is linked with uh, experimentation with products. And so one young person was like, oh yeah, I really wanted to try those vitamin vapes to help me sleep. And I was like, oh my gosh, we have to, we have to change this now. So again, direct feedback from young people. Um, and that went from try something new to find something new. That other piece there, again, we started by calling or branding it right with a hashtag of quit tobacco. Um, and what young people said was like, my friends and I don't use the word tobacco. Like, are you talking about vaping? Um, and so we switched that to quit vaping because that was the language they were using. And then what started as a nine post campaign actually grew to 18 posts. And we had a different um, two images for each message. And so this is the final project. This is our very first um, youth and young adult campaign that we did. And you can see it's full of color and diversity and it's just simple direct messages. Um, and it had a link directly um, and was launched in conjunction with our Quit Tobacco website. Um, all of our kind of call to action pieces on these um, post linked young people to this site, which is, um, available in both Spanish and English and uh, specifically has youth and young adult resources um, where they can also download um, and share materials and get direct quit support. And then in terms of how we targeted this, we did run this on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And again, that's a lesson learned here. We'll talk about that in just a second. This ran for seven weeks, we paid to post. Um, and this is targeted at young people aged 13 to 25 living in California. Um, and then in terms of kind of how we did, um, all of these platforms do give you really helpful analytics. Um, and you can just see by and large here that uh, Instagram was a much better return on our investment. And that was a lesson learned, right? We were like, let's just cast the net wide. Let's, you know, promote it on Twitter. Let's do Facebook. Let's do Instagram. But that wasn't where young people were. And so, um, this was, again, that sort of learning the process for us. Um, also, what was interesting and worthy of calling out with this campaign was that we actually saw um, a lot of likes and interaction on kind of the front end of the campaign, but not so many clicks um, or click throughs to that quit resource. And so interestingly, as the campaign went on, um, we actually saw kind of those likes decrease and the click-throughs increase. And so there's definitely something to be said about running kind of a multi-week campaign in this theory of change. Um, and I, what I theorize is that, you know, maybe young folk, you know, young people were like bookmarking or circling back to this. So they, you know, they saw the post and kind of maybe considered a quit attempt, maybe kind of thought about it. Um, and then as they sort of actively transitioned into trying, circled back to that resource. So again, that piece of always tying whatever messaging you're putting out to a resource is so critical because that young person might not be ready to click on it then, but they may in a week, right, as they move into that, you know, contemplation from pre-contemplation. So again, that resource piece was a huge learning for us at this point. And then as we kind of came into that uh, second campaign in the fall, again, we started to have more data about how use patterns with youth and young adults were really changing as a result of COVID. And as I kind of said earlier, um, 
we saw that maybe young people who were kind of experimenting before they were sheltering in place and learning remotely were decreasing use. Um, but unfortunately, regular users, the young people who may have had an established addiction prior to um, remote learning and the pandemic were actually increasing rates of use um, or accelerated um, rates of use. And so this is a really critical time. And again, this is all directly from young people. We always want to be having the conversation with them. Um, but this is a really critical time to make sure that we were supporting quit attempts and really focusing on cessation messaging. And so um, we decided to shift focus to a digital treatment campaign. Again, our very first, some, some hits, some misses, but mostly some hits. Um, and what we heard from young people by talking to our youth and young adult partners were that at this point, the kind of top quit motivators were health impacts. So both related to COVID and also future. Um, the expense, so just the cost of products, right? So not having enough money to do fun things, to hang out with your friends. Um, and then also the fear of addiction. So the stigma of, I don't wanna be addicted. I don't want to feel like I am tied to something I can't quit. And so what we really wanted to do was pair this campaign also with actual things they could do. So actionable things. So they're at home. So what are, you know, items around the house or exercises or things that they can grab that are readily available and also low cost. And so just like our first campaign, we did a survey monkey. Um, and this was reviewed by over 100 young people um, across 15 counties. And the median age here was 16. Um, and again, what do you like? What do you dislike? D does this make sense? Um, which would you pay attention to this? Where would you place this? Really similar questions. And we got excellent feedback, which changed a lot of our campaign for us. Um, so quickly here again, just um, sort of the before and after. So that top line is what we tested. That bottom line is our final outcome. Um, probably no surprise here. And this is a sort of a direct quote from a young person that said, anytime I see your risk of XYZ, I'm not going to read it. Like that's boring. I don't care. Um, but actually saying like, if you quit vaping, this thing will lower, right? Your risk of cancers or mental health impacts will lower. Um, instantly to them seemed less boring and serious and increase the likelihood of them interacting with it. Um, that second image, um, what we heard from young people there was like, I don't, know what a quit team is. Like, what do you mean a quit team? Um, which was a really good and like humbling check-in for me and my adultism and my adult language in public health and in the field of tobacco control. We say things like a quit team, build a quit team, find your support network. But that wasn't the language that young people were using. They didn't know what a quit team was. They just, you know, it was like, well, what does that mean? Like ask my friends for support. So again, making sure that we're, um, not using our own language and assuming understanding and actually hearing from young people what that what is a quit team right it's build a team ask your friends for support grab the apps download things um, and again just simple direct messaging there with the same image but a totally different interaction and that third image there again young people just felt like kind of i think one person was like this feels boring and sad and not believable this feels cheesy um, and that they really wanted to see someone who looked happy. Like that vibe was not what would encourage them to interact with a post. And again, same message, different image, completely different experience. Um, and then finally that um, image there on the far right, again, another reminder about language. So, you know, we had a young person say like, well, what's tobacco? Like, are you talking about cigarettes? And also like, What's a craving? And they said, you know, does that mean when I have the urge to vape? And it was like, again, oh yeah, right? Like we need to make sure that we're using the language that young people are using and not assuming um, an understanding. They didn't know what a craving was, but they did know what it meant to say the urge to vape. So again, making sure that we are talking with and not at young people and bringing them into this conversation is so important when we're putting these messages on social media. Um, and so again, here is that second campaign in all of its glory. Um, and this campaign, unlike the first one, <clears throat> we actually deployed in sort of like a two prong approach. Um, so we fronted the campaign um, with kind of quit motivator posts. So posts to encourage quit attempts. 
Um, and then the second wave of posts really serve to support those subsequent quit attempts. Um, I do wanna mention that we did have this campaign reviewed at the time by California Smokers Helpline, which is now Kick It California, um, a handful of local cessation experts and also um, pediatricians prior to launch. So we really kind of like rallied the troops on this one. And um, it tied both to our um, youth and young adults quit tobacco page and also launched in conjunction with our first ever digital quit kit. Um, and again, this was, made specifically to include tips and tools and resources and things that young people could find around the house that were either free of low cost, right? So making sure that we're linking them up with something they can actually do and access and utilize. We're sheltering in place, we're learning from home, but there might be a toothpick you can grab and chew on, or you might have like some hard candy that you can grab. Um, like the first campaign, um, this did run for seven weeks, but this time, again, that piece about learnings, we just placed it on Instagram and really focused our efforts there. Um, we did pay to promote this. And again, this was to young people living in California who were aged 13 to 25. And as I sort of mentioned, this was like a two-prong or two-wave approach where the first wave was really working to um, kind of start young people thinking about quitting. So really addressing those quit motivators and encouraging a quit attempt. And then really moving into actual quit tips for those young people who may have transitioned into a, an active quit attempt. And so this is how we did. Um, that uh, top um, sort of analytics there is from our spring 2020 campaign and the bottom is fall. Um, and this is the same budget with the same targeting. Um, and it really showed us, again, that we had the right message at the right time and we placed it in the right spot, right? Um, we had over 1,600 clicks to the CYAN um, cessation webpage, which was 140% increase from that previous campaign. Um, and so again, this piece about um, that theory of change also came true. And we kind of took that learning with that two-prong approach in this one. And just like the last campaign, we saw a lot of bookmarks. We saw a lot of likes on the front end and maybe not as many click-throughs. And then as we actually did quit tips, we saw a significant increase in click through. Um, so again, young people circling back and making sure that we are always putting that link, always linking to a resource was really critical here. And then that last final campaign, I'm not gonna share analytics. This was sort of where we kind of found our rhythm, if you will, with social media. And this is kind of like the culmination of all of our learnings. And this was just a really small, fun, simple campaign that was just kind of saying, hey, now is a great time to quit. If you've made a New Year's resolution to quit product use, um, we've got resources, you can do it, right? Um, and again, we just promoted this directly on Instagram for the month of January um, and I saw really significant click-throughs to our website. And then I do wanna to just touch upon the other campaigns we've launched since sort of, that's like our canon of learning, if you will, for social media. Um, in October of 2021, and you can probably see some of the learnings that I've shared, right? Um, simple messaging, diverse young people, smiling faces, and we'll talk about those more specifically in the next section, but I'm sure you're kind of pulling them out here. Um, so on the left there in October of 2021, as part of Latinx Heritage Month, we did release in conjunction with the Latino Coordinating Center, um, a campaign that was um, Span uh, Spanish language campaign. Um, and we updated images to be more reflective of those communities. Um, interestingly, prior to this launch, we saw like, I don't know, five to maybe six hits per month to our Spanish language quit page. Um, and when this launched in September, we saw that increase of five to six jump to just under 500 hits. And in October, we saw that jump to 700 hits for that Spanish language quit page. Um, and what was probably the most hopeful piece or the thing I felt most proud of was that the average time spent on that page was two and a half minutes. And so we weren't just getting young people to the resources, we were actually getting them to engage. Two and a half minutes on a website is longer than like I even spend. And so young people were really speaking out, really engaging and reading these resources. Um, and that at that time was our highest length of readership across all of our pages. So really encouraging. 
Um, on the right there, so that's our January 2022 campaign. Um, we did another resolution themed campaign, um, but this one we tied to mental health. Um, again, we were getting more information from data on sort of the declining mental health of young people um, and that being linked to an increase of product use. Um, and really using products at this time to manage and cope with mental health symptoms. And so this campaign was tying that, things like I'll take more breaths, I'll take more walks, um, I'll listen to more music because that can improve your mood and mental health. Um, and this campaign was so successful um, that this actually was kind of the impetus for us to create a mental health specific um, social media campaign. Um, which we launched the following May as part of mental health awareness. Um, and then subsequently that campaign actually became print materials and I'll, I'll share all of those with you as well. So this is the mental health campaign on the left. This launched uh, last May in 2022. Uh, that was a 12 post mental health campaign. Again, simple messaging, bright colors, real and diverse looking young people. Um, we even had one young person who reviewed this say, um, it was really nice to see a young person with acne, or it was really nice to see a diverse body and a plus size body because that's what I look like. And um, I, those braces were awesome. And so again, this idea that we need to be reflecting the faces of young people that they're seeing in their community, and that that increased the likelihood of them wanting to read and engage with a message. On the right, our most recent campaign is our May 2023 campaign. Um, this was a six post campaign about SB 793 and really just encouraging young people to quit, right? Our state did it, you can too. Simple messaging, um, directing young people directly to um, a link. And then I did want to share, I'm not gonna dive into all the analytics of our mental health campaign, but I did want to kind of share again, our befores and our afters. So that top line there are the messages that we tested with young people throughout the state. The bottom is our final outcomes. Um, starting with that left picture there, it's, it's so interesting because to me, I was like, that looks like a like really like big exhale and she's relieved, but young people didn't like it. They thought it was strange. They wanted to see your face. They wanted to see a forward facing young person who was smiling. Um, and they're right, you know, it totally changes it. I would absolutely engage with that bottom left picture. They also didn't like the word irritability. Um, they didn't know what that meant. Um, and they were like, well, it's not just a mood swing. And so it was like, okay, fair enough. You know, we can decrease that language. Let's use just simple, clean, direct messaging. Um, that middle green image, um, the feeling of money being and this is interesting, just changing from when we did our digital quit campaign, um, money being tied to sort of not having connection with your friends didn't come across as strong this time. So we started out by saying, oh, well, let's use that motivator to quit. You know, you'll feel less alone. You'll have more money to do things with your friends if you quit vaping. Um, but it didn't connect here. And what came across in the feedback from young people was um, that connection was about connecting without product use. Um, or the need to use a device um, was seen as like stopping them from being present. So it wasn't at all about money being the quit motivator. It was about genuine, authentic connection with a friend. And so we just simplified that language. I feel less alone. I can connect more without the distraction of vaping. And it's a much more powerful and resonating message. Um, that third image there, same message, just a different picture. Um, the gray young people said felt very kind of lonesome and sad. It didn't feel happy. And I was like, duh, why did I select a gray image? Of course, it doesn't feel happy. It should be bright. It should be colorful. It should elicit that feeling. And so again, um, same message, just a different image and a, a front facing um, young woman. And it feels super different. Um, and then that final image there, um, the importance of language with mental health. Um, young people didn't want to see the word decrease. So in that top message, we said, anxiety symptoms decrease when you quit vaping. Um, and as we created these, to me at least, again, that adultism, decrease seemed positive. Um, but what young people said when they reviewed these was that decrease didn't elicit improvement, which was a really interesting piece. 
Um, and so again, that piece of making sure that we're asking young people to collaborate um, and review is so critical. Um, they're the experts in language and messaging and the types of things that we create needs to reflect that. Um, and so again, just switching that from uh, symptoms decrease to symptoms improve. Um, this was one of our most successful images in the whole campaign and one of our most requested print materials. So again, that simple switch can have a really huge impact. Um, and then just before we jump into kind of our overarching lessons learned, I just wanted to um, really touch upon that mental health piece. This is a quote from a youth participant in our 2023 listing sessions, and I did share this last week, and I, I can't stress enough um, at this juncture how much young people are struggling right now um, and how often use of tobacco and marijuana products are tied to treating a mental health symptom. Um, we know from both state and national data that poor mental health is linked to uh, things like higher rates of tobacco use, right? Um, however, historically, this hasn't typically been tied to why young people initiated use. Um, you know, for example, in previous data, it was things like um, exploring flavors or because of boredom or peer influence. Uh, but in the most recent California Youth Tobacco Survey, we saw that young people are actually reporting a reason for use as being a nicotine buzz. So actually seeking out that high. And that was the first time ever. Um, and then we also saw that nearly 40% of young people were saying they're using these products to relieve stress and anxiety. Um, so again, having any conversation around tobacco and marijuana use has to include mental health. Um, and we really need to ensure that we're working to collectively address both kind of the dueling epidemics, if you will, of youth vaping and declining mental health. So I will leave that piece here as we pivot to best practices um, and just leave that with you to kind of think about as you create materials that we're also addressing this piece as well. All right, so jumping into our findings and lessons learned. So I think this kind of really serves to highlight this, right? Um, on the left there, we have an image from our, our first campaign uh, in spring of 2020. This image only had six clicks to our quit site. And I look at it now and I'm like, yeah, I can see why. Um, versus our most recent campaign uh, around SB 793 in May. And this had 358 links to the quit site. Um, and again, it's because it's all of the feedback young people have shared with us in the last three years. It's a diverse, real looking young person who's smiling, who feels warm. It's simple, direct messaging. It's positive affirmation based, right? You can too. It's not fear based. It's not negative health messaging and it's colorful and it feels accessible. Um, whereas again, it's a great message, right? Keep your hands busy and free of tobacco, but maybe not the best image. And so um, that really comes across in how many young people actually took that and clicked onto our quit site. And so again, this isn't the gold standard, but this is again, what we've found and heard from young people in our consumer testing and also in our focus group. Um, young people really want simple, direct and easy to digest messaging. So again, that piece about tobacco or public health speak. Remembering that young people might not be using words like triggers or cravings. Remember that young people are saying vaping and not saying tobacco. So, you know, again, I think something we really need to think about here, and as I create materials, I always ask myself this, you know, what, what information do we want young people to have about vaping and tobacco versus what information will they actually pay attention to, right? And those are two very different things. So again, it has to be something we know they're going to engage with. We want to like throw everything at them, um, but that isn't what they're going to pay attention to. Um, and then in terms of kind of like the tone of the message, scare tactics or overly negative messaging was viewed as, as negative, right? In listening sessions, young people could remember, you know, like the cigarette in the throat or like your brain on drugs in a, in a frying pan, but that was more because they were shocking, not because it made them take an action. Um, so things like, your symptoms improve, you will feel um, more connected with your friends, really focusing on the positive outcome of quitting versus the negative impact of continued use. Um, and, and just kind of like a best practice in terms of, of language and words used. Um, as a kind of standard, I like to keep 
uh, reading level at or around eighth grade. And you can run those tests on Word or online for free just to make sure that you're using um, accessible language as well. And then um, in terms of, again, message preference, young people want an actionable tip, not just facts, right? Don't tell me I need to quit. Tell me, I know it, most young people know that they need to quit or want to quit, but tell me how to quit, right? Is it, again, that piece about building a team, downloading apps? Is it being prepared with gum and toothpicks, um, hydrating, things like that? So don't just talk at me, be an ally and support me through this with an action. Um, young people also want, a resource, right? So, okay, I should build a quit team. How do I find that, right? So always making sure that everything you post, um, every social media message, every Instagram post, every, even every print material should always tie to a resource. Because like that example, young people might not be ready to click on it in that moment, but in a couple of days they might, or it may even be a couple of weeks. And if they circle back to that, you want to make it accessible. Um, and then again, that piece about anonymity um, and access. So all of our materials, we very clearly say, this is a free and anonymous resource. Those two words really elicit a feeling of safety for young people. And so saying that on the front end is going to significantly increase the likelihood of accessing that support. Um, and then in terms of design and image preference, colors. Young people over and over again in all of our consumer testing and feedback always preferred, even if the message was the same, the image that had a more bright background or a colorful sweater. Color was what got their attention. And when you think about that piece of competing screens, right? I'm watching TV. Um, I'm watching TV while I'm scrolling on Instagram and also listening to my siblings talk. Color is what's going to pull them in. That's what's going to, you know, break that monotony of scrolling. And so it makes sense. Um, and then in terms of faces, so over and over again, we heard about, I really liked how genuine her smile looked, or I really liked um, that she was looking at me and that she looked real. And over, and that's, again, I don't want to say there's not a time and a place for things like, um, animation or vectors, but over and above young people prefer to see real people um, over illustrations. Um, and then again, they want those faces to reflect what they look like. Um, they are smart and intuitive. They know when it's a stock image um, and stock image is coming a long way, right? There's still uh, some ground that needs to be covered, but there are more diverse images, but by and large, it takes me a very long time to find diverse images. and so. Take that extra 15 minutes. Um, you know, don't just be the hands with the paintbrush. Look for a young person that looks like the, the young people you're working with and serving in your community because it really does make a difference. Um, and then again, I can't stress enough, make sure that the images that you're pairing with your messages reflect the young people and the diversity of our state. It's so important to see their own faces reflected back in these and representation really matters with young people. And then just kind of some overarching takeaways that we heard from young people in terms of how they're interacting with these posts once we've created them and targeted um, and placed. Um, again, young people were not on Facebook or Twitter. So if you are going to have any type of paid promotion or targeting, really the preference and the presence of young people is on Instagram. So again, meet people where they're at. Um, young people like hashtags. So, you know, toss in as many hashtags as you'd like. They like them. And we did see some click through on them. Um, and then in terms of reading the hashtags, um, we tested hashtags. We tested, you know, using caps, using lowercase. They preferred that first letter being capitalized, like you can see in that example. Um, and they also liked emojis. So something that's interactive and not stagnant. Um, and also like scroll through posts, right? So scroll to see the answer or swipe to see the answer. Something that in is engaging um, also tested well. Um, and then that piece about that kind of call to action, right? So that resource that you're linking to, um, young people are not going to copy and paste a link. So if you have it in the post, like we always do, put link to bio and actually link it to your bio. Make call to action be something young people can actually do. And think about yourself. If I can't click right on something as an almost 40 year old woman, I'm not gonna copy and paste it, right? Young people aren't either. So if you have a call to action, make sure it's actually something young people can do. 
All right, so kind of jumping into, and I'll go through these quickly. So we have, you know, five or eight minutes for questions. Um, I just wanted to share the resources that we have available to you for free um, to download on our website, which is cyanonline.org. Um, all of these posts that we have created over the last three years, all seven of those campaigns and some additional campaigns that we did for like Great American Smokeout um, are on our website and they are categorized by things like quit tips or reasons to quit. Um, and these are all free to download. Um, and we can also customize these for you. If there's a different quit resource that you'd like to link people to, we've done this for campuses and coalitions. Um, that's something that we can do. And then we do also have a page with all of our Spanish language posts, again, all free and available for download. And then this is just a screen grab um, of our two quit pages, again, English and Spanish, specifically with youth and young adults specific quit resources. Um, and again, these are all free and anonymous um, uh, resources for young people, as well as that link out to our digital quit kit, which is downloadable for free. Um, and that is both in English and also in Spanish. And then we do have, this is the full mental health campaign that I shared with you. So all 12 of those posts are available for download, as well as our SB793 quit campaign, which is there on the right. And again, that's our most recent campaign that just launched last month. Um, and then I, I kind of hinted at this. So our uh, mental health campaign, the digital campaign was so successful, um, had so much interaction and such a positive response from young people that we actually took that campaign um, and created print materials and downloadable educational materials from that campaign. So um, these are just still images of the poster and flyer version of these materials. Again, these are downloadable for free. Um, or if you are a CTCP funded project, you can um, order these and we will ship these to you for free. So again, those are the posters and flyers. Um, and then we do also have that, um, all of those materials in our, this is kind of like a jumbo postcard, if you will, it's a little bit bigger, um, that's front and back. Uh, again, free, downloadable, and can also be ordered um, if you're a CTCP funded project. And then my final ask of you before we jump into questions, if you would be so kind, please to um, just do a quick evaluation on this training. Uh, I think my, my co-host here, Jocelyn, will pop that link into chat for everyone. Uh, it really does just take two minutes, I promise. And those narrative pieces aren't even mandatory. So uh, it just helps us. We ask um, a lot of young people to share their thoughts and ask how we can be better. And that is part of growing and making sure that we are sharing and doing the best to reach the field. Um, so please let us know how you think we did. And if there's anything else that you would like to hear or resources that are needed right now. And then that is me with all of my contact information. We will be sharing both uh, this recorded presentation on our YouTube, as well as the slides, which I'll be sending out uh, later today. But certainly if you have any additional questions or if there's any other support resources or thoughts you'd like to share, I would love to hear from you. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing here. We've got about five or six minutes. Um, if there are any questions, thoughts, any resources that you'd like to share with any posting that you've done, um, now would be a, the time for that.